Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today I want to talk about mixing and how to mix interesting neutrals and grays with watercolor. So there are a few different ways that you can mix neutral colors and you can get interesting grays or browns with just the slightest hint of their base color by adding complementary colors together. Or you could simply use the muddy parts, parts on your palette to add neutral areas if you have uh, mud on your palette. Another possibility is using premixed grays. There are indeed a couple of useful ones and I will show them in a minute. You could also use a single pigment gray. And about these I have to say I like to add grays and other neutrals depending on the situation. So I try to be really careful with pre-made darks because they can uh, sort of destroy the luminosity of a painting, particularly for landscapes or for uh, urban sketching, anything where you want to show a light and shadow situation. I find it's often better to mix your own neutrals, particularly for these usage cases or for field sketching. When it comes, on the other hand, to detailed renderings of animals or plants or objects, then greys and blacks definitely have their place. And as a rule of thumb, I try to stick with the real dark color, with the black or the gray, when the local color of the object is also gray or black. And local color here is the color of the object itself, so a black bird or a black berry or a black car, without taking any light or contrast into account. So how do I mix my neutrals? For example, for a stormy sky, I often find that adding a bit of burnt sienna or raw sienna or yellow ochre to my sky blue, which is usually ultramarine or cerulean blue, gives really lovely results, particularly when the blue is slightly granulating and the pigment particles will group together on the paper and produce an interesting texture. And you can try out all kinds of different combinations between blues and earth tones. So whether you try out uh, ultramarine and burnt sienna or burnt amber or maybe even sepia, doesn't really matter. You will get really interesting um, blue grays and or dark blues from these mixtures. On the other hand, cerulean blue uh, will give you slightly warmer mixes, slightly muddier mixes. Uh, this has to do with the kind of uh, opacity that, cer that this particular pigment has. So you will get slightly lighter gray mixes from uh, adding cerulean blue. So let's just take a look at these blue and earth tone mixes for a second. For shadow areas you could try out a muted blue or violet and you can mix this from a tiny touch of purple or uh, violet or blue and then use whatever kind of palette mud you have available. Or uh, if your palette is clean, then you could use, uh, as before, sepia or burnt amber or maybe even a gray. And this will give you a really nice muted shadow color. Some subjects like yellow or red flowers will look more vivid if you add a slightly darker shade of the same color as the shadow. So uh, if you have a yellow flower, then try adding a slightly darker yellow to the next layer for your shadow area. And if you have a red or a pink flower, then um, try intensifying the, uh, the red, try darkening the red before you mix in anything else. And you can take the red, for example, you could take it easily up to a, a really dark violet for really dark shadow colors if you wanted. And then sometimes you can use the trick of using complementary color as a shadow color. So if you're trying to, let's say, a banana in yellow uh, with a dark shadow, 
then try using as for the spots or for the shadow try not using black or gray or brown but try using violet instead and you will see that you will get much more intense uh, shadow areas from from using the complementary let's look at what describes a neutral tone in the first place so uh, a neutral tone is a color of reduced intensity and the easiest way to reduce the intensity of a color is by adding in its complementary color so it will move more towards gray. And uh, the complementary colors are the colors that are opposite on the color wheel. So this would be red and green, blue and orange, yellow and violet. These are complements. And mixing complementary colors can give a vast range of neutrals and grays so it's worth to give these color pairs on your palette a, a try. So if you start by mixing in just a little bit of the complement and then see how the color changes and then mix in a little bit more until you end up on the other side uh, with the pure version of, of the other color. This is what I'm doing here uh, in the video with the three complementary pairs that I mentioned. So uh, green and red or in this case magenta, blue and orange, and violet and yellow. And if you add more of the complement, you will arrive at some point where you will neutralize the two colors, just to the point where they will produce some sort of gray or brown mix, sometimes dull, sometimes very intense. And these are actually um, sometimes the most useful colors and uh, often the colors that are can be found everywhere in nature as opposed to the very intense primary colors that are on the outer sides of these color charts. And you can use this principle as a trick to get uh, more natural greens in your paintings. If you add just a tiny bit of red or um, an earth tone, then this will often take away the edge of some very pure, almost artificial colors uh, that you will only find very rarely in nature. So um, colors like Taylo green, they don't really exist in nature or even the sap greens that um, you can get from convenience mixes. These are really intense, bright greens and uh, they are great for mixing, but they are not so great for using as a pure color straight from the tube. Also try out less obvious mixes like uh, pink and turquoise or red earth tones and blues or yellow earth tones and violet. The very vibrant pigments with a high intensity and high chroma will give you strong grays. So if you take a Taylo green and mix it with a Conacridone pink, these are really very transparent, very intense colors and they will give you a really dark strong gray. And less clear, low chroma colors will produce lovely subdued mixes. I mentioned this for the cerulean blue, with, which has this kind of opacity in itself. And then if you add in a yellow ochre, which is also not a very intense color in itself, then you can get this very nice subdued uh, brown-gray mix. I particularly like the intense darks that you can get with uh, Taylor colors. So, um, as I mentioned, crinacridone rose or crinacridone pink and Taylor green. Or if you want a slightly softer granulating variant, you can exchange Taylor green with viridian. You can also get a lovely purple dark mix from a vermilion or any warm orange red and Taylor blue, so this will give you another really strong dark gray. Shadow. So my advice, especially for beginners 
would be to throw out the black and try to mix your own darks and get to know your palette really until you understand and can control the intensity of a true black color. As for premixed grays, I already mentioned that I mainly use these instead of black for uh, really black objects that uh, have the, this local color. And um, I find that when using these uh, for shadow areas, they can end up a little bit too intense and make your painting flat, um, particularly if you use black instead of um, darkening your colors in another way. So uh, if you add black everywhere in your painting, you will essentially um, end up with a very flat or very dead looking painting. Another quick method to get realistic shadows on any subject is to add the shadow with muted violet or blue first and then let this dry and then put a thin color layer on top. This will look as if you build up a lot of layers when in fact this is a very quick way to work. And it will also help a lot if your subject moves. You simply add the shadows first from observation and you can always add a color layer later. All in all, I often find myself drawn to the intensity and variety of color itself. Because really, if you look at, at any palette, who can resist a vibrant primary palette that looks like candy? Um, but then when I'm painting, I often find the neutrals that I get from mixing these intense colors much more useful while I'm sketching. When you put a single very intense color against a bunch of neutrals, then this color will stand out a lot more than if you were to put it next to other very intense high chroma colors. So these are just some of my strategies for adding a variety of grays and browns and neutrals to my sketching and uh, for handling color when I paint. And I'd love to hear from you what mixes do you like, what do you use on a regular basis, or did I maybe forget anything? So let me know in the comments. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And as always, feel free to like, share and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye!